what's going on guys in this tutorial we're going to look at javascript drag and drop events and we're going to create this little application here with some html css javascript and we're going to be able to grab an image and you'll see when i hover over any of these boxes that it gets darker and it gets a, a different kind of border and i can drop it in Okay, so we can move it into any of these boxes. Now, obviously, this by itself is not really a full application, but I'm going to show you how to implement this kind of UI so you could, you know, use it in a game or, or anything where you, you'd want this kind of effect. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up VS Code and I have my file structure already complete. Basically, it's just uh, an index.html file. It's a, J a JS and CSS folder. The JS has a main JS file. The CSS has a style.css file. All right, so they're all empty. Um, if you're following along, just go ahead and create those files. So in the index.html, I'm just going to use Emmet. I'm going to say uh, exclamation tab. That'll give me kind of a boilerplate. And then we're going to just give a title of drag and drop. And let's make sure we bring in our CSS. So we'll put a link tag here to CSS slash style CSS. And before I forget, let's add the JavaScript. So script source is going to be in the JS folder and then main.js. All right. Now the HTML for this is going to be very simple. Let's actually just go back to the app real quick. So each box here is going to have a class. It's going to be a div with the class of empty. And then the one that is actually filled is going to have a it's going to be a div with the class of fill inside of that empty. Okay, so that's what we want to do. And then through our JavaScript, we'll add drag events for when we pick it up. That'll be the drag start. We have drag over um, drop and some other ones as well. So we'll be taking a look at that. All right. Now for this, let's create uh, we'll say dot. So class of empty. And I'm using Emmet so I can say dot empty for a div with the class of empty and I'm going to say times five and then tab and that'll give me five of those divs. And then the first one is going to be the only one that has the fill class or the fill div. And we want to add onto this the HTML5 property draggable because we want it, this to be set to true. Otherwise, we won't be able to drag it at all. So let's save that. And that's it for our HTML. So next we'll move on to the style CSS and I'm just going to add a background color to the body. I'll say background. Let's do dark, um, dark salmon. And that's all I'm going to do with the body. Now let's create our fill class. So fill is like I said, that's the one with the image. That's the, the filled box. So let's say background. You could do a, just a color if you want, but I'm doing an image. So it's going to be URL and I'm using an image from the Unsplash service, which just gives you like random pictures if you want of any size. They have a really good API too. Uh, so it's going to be source dot Unsplash dot com slash random and then the size will be 150 times 150. Okay, so that'll just give us a random image every time we load the page and we're going to position this relative so that we can use um, top and left and stuff like that. Um, the height of this is going to be the same as the image. So 150 pixels with same thing. And let's add uh, top. We want to move it over five pixels and from the left five pixels. And let's just set the cursor to a pointer so that when we hover over it, the, the cursor actually change, changes to a pointer. So now for the empty ones, um, for empty, we're actually going to make it display as an inline block because we want it to have block level properties, but we want it to be, you know, lined up, uh, not on top of each other. And let's see for the height. For the height and the width, we want it to be 10 pixels bigger than the fill because we want that spacing. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a, it's going to look weird. So let's do height width both 160 pixels. If you use something different like 100 here, then you would use like 110 here. Just make sure it's 10 more. All right. So um, now what we want to do is just add a margin between each empty box. So we'll do 10 
make it kind of like a grid and then um, let's add a border so it'll be three pixels let's do salmon and let's do solid and then the background we'll say background color is going to be white all right so we can take a look at this now you can open this with your html file or you if you're using vs code you can use a uh, I'm actually using live server, which is an extension that will open up my HTML file on my local host. So I can just go to whoops, we need to go to the HTML and I can click and go to open with live server and that'll open it up. All right. So we have the image here. We can move it, but we can't do it. It's not doing anything else. Uh, if we set draggable to false, we wouldn't be able to do this. So that's why we need that that attribute. So back to the CSS, we have a couple other things to do. Basically, when we click on it and we we hold down the mouse and we're dragging it, I want to add a class called hold. And for that class, I'm just going to add a not a background, a border. And let's do um, solid light gray four pixels. Okay. And then also when we hover over the empty boxes, I want those to have a class of hovered. And what what we want to happen here is change the background from white to a light gray. And then we also want to change the border style to dashed. All right. And then one final class will be invisible. And this is just going to be display none. And I'll show you why we need this in a little bit. All right, so that should be good. Now we can start on the JavaScript. So we have basically two elements to work with. We have the fill, which is the, the, the filled box with the image. And then we have the empties. So let's create variables for those. So fill and we'll set it to document dot uh, query selector. And it has a class of fill. So we want to put in here dot fill. All right. And then for the empties, um, there's multiple empty blocks. So I'm actually going to call this empties or you can call it boxes or whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to set it to document dot query selector all because there's multiples. And basically we're going to grab it and it's going to put it into a node list. Um, as opposed to a single element. So let's say empty right here. So it'll select all the empty classes or, or elements and put them into a node list inside the empties variable. And we can then loop through it and stuff like that. All right. So now let's add the listeners for our fill. So we'll say fill listeners. I cannot spell. Uh, so fill dot and then we're going to say add event listener. And the event we're going to listen for here is drag start. Okay, it should be all lowercase. And then we're going to call a function called drag start camel case. Okay, so let's add one more for fill. And it's going to be the drag end. Nope, not camel case. I made that mistake. Uh, I used to make that mistake all the time. Uh, then we'll say drag end as the function. All right, so let's uh, let's create a, a comment here and let's say fill not fill um, drag functions. Okay, so we'll have drag start and we need to add function here. So drag start and let's add function drag end. So basically for drag start, all we want to do when we when we click on it, and we hold it and I can actually show you when these run. So we'll say start and uh, let's go down here. And we'll say end. Oh, damn it. Sorry, guys. Let me shut that off. All right, so end and we'll go back to let's see, we'll go back to our application and let's open up our console here. And now I'm going to I'm going to click and hold and move it. And you'll see that in the console we see start. And then when I let go, we see end. So those are the, the, the events that 
we're watching for here. Now, when I grab it and it starts, we want to add the hold class, which is this here, which gives it a border, a gray border. And you don't have to do this, but I'm, I just want to kind of show you guys the different events and in, in what we can do. So um, let's do this, meaning the, the fill element that we grab. And we want to call class name or the class name property and and we want to append to it. So plus equals and we want to add a space here and then hold. So we're basically just appending the hold class. All right. And then let's see what happens if we just do that. So if I grab it and I move it, notice that it, it's not really taking it out of the box. It kind of doubles and that's we don't want that. That's where the invisible class comes in and we want to use that. But if I were to say this dot class name and I'm going to use equals, which is going to replace it. Okay, it's going to just give it the invisible class and that's it. If I were to just do that, when I click it, it, it disappears and we don't want that. What we want is us is a very Uh, minute delay. So we're going to use set timeout here. So we're going to say set timeout and set timeout takes in a function, a callback. So I'm going to use an arrow here and then I'm just going to grab this and put it here. All right. And then the second um, parameter of set timeout is the, is the time, but we can actually just put a zero here just to make it so that this happens after we actually move it. So let's try that. And now you can see I'm actually pulling it out of the box. Okay, so that part is is actually very important. And then for drag end, all we're going to do is set the class back to fill. So this dot class name, we're not appending it. We're just setting it back to fill like that. So now when I let go, it actually, you know, it's still there. It doesn't disappear. All right. And that's that's pretty much it for the fill listeners. Um, now we want to handle the empties. All right. Now, since this is a node list and not a single element, we're going to just loop through. So let's say loop through empties. And um, uh, we'll loop through the empties and call drag events. So I'm going to use a for of loop here. So we can say for const and I'm going to call this empty. This is the variable we'll use within the loop of empties. All right. And then for each one, we're going to say empty dot add event listener. And this event is going to be the drag over. So basically, when we drag over the empty box, then we want to call a function called drag over like that. And then what I'll do is copy this down four times because we have four other events. Um, this one here is going to be drag enter. So right here, we'll say drag enter. And then this one is going to be drag leave. So when we leave the, the box, leave and uh, let's see this one here. Whoops. This one here is going to be drop, just drop. But we're going to call the function that we run drag drop like that. Okay, so now let's go down here and let's create function drag over. Actually, I don't want to do that. Um, getting used to these Mac keyboards. Uh, so drag over. Actually, we'll just copy this because we need three more functions like it. So one, two, three. And this one will be drag. Let's see. Drag over, drag enter. Drag leave. And drag drop. Okay. So um, let's see if you wanted to actually we'll, we'll just do this. We'll show you when each of these run. So over and let's just uh, copy that. Just doing this real quick just to show you guys. So this will be enter. Leave and drop. All right. So let's go back here and let's grab it 
And now notice that when I'm moving it over is just firing off. When I go into the box, it enters and then leaves. Okay, enter, leave, enter, leave, enter, leave. And when I drop, um, and actually, you, you know what, drop isn't even going to run because the, um, the drag over, we actually have to prevent the default behavior. So we can pass in an event parameter since this was part of an event listener. It's the response or callback for an event listener. And then we can say e dot prevent default like that. So now if we go back and I let go, now you can see it actually calls drop. Okay, I know that those this is really small, um, but it's calling all the events that it should and all the functions that it should, which is good. All right, so let's get rid of these console logs. And I, I realize that this, you know, I, I didn't have I don't have to do this stuff, but I like you guys to actually understand what's going on and when these are firing off rather than just watching me code and, and not showing you like what's going on. Um, so dra uh, drag over is is just that um, it's just going to we're just going to prevent the default now drag enter we also want to prevent the default at first okay and then what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to add the hovered class so this dot class name and we want to append hovered so space hovered and that what that'll do is it'll give it that that dashed border and that background okay and I'm talking about the empty blocks boxes and then on drag leave what we want to happen is we want to replace um, hovered we, we don't want hovered there anymore so we want it to be just empty for the class so this dot class name equals em uh, empty All right. Now, when we append, obviously, it just adds to it. So when we enter, it's going to be have the class of empty and hovered. But when we leave, it's going to go back to just empty. It's going to get rid of the hovered because this replaces it. Okay, this appends to it. This replaces it. Um, and then finally, for drag drop, we want to uh, I don't know why I'm writing div. We want to set the class name to empty. But we also want to append the fill. Okay, so uh, I don't mean add a fill class or anything like that. I mean actually take the fill element, which we defined right here, and append it into the empty div. Okay, so if we look at our HTML, we want to be able to move this around into each of these. And we do that with the append method. So we can say this dot append. Okay, so this meaning the empty that were clever. dropping in and we want to append the entire fill element and that should do it. So let's try it. So I'll grab this and now as I hover, you'll see that effect. And then when I drop, it'll actually drop in. And if we look at our console over here, um, you'll see right now it's in the second one, the fill. But if I go and I move it here, now it's in the third one. If I move it to the end one, now it's in the end one. All right, so we're essentially moving it around the DOM, which is what we want. Um, and this is all possible because of these drag events and because of the HTML5 draggable property. All right, so hopefully that kind of explains drag drop to you guys. Um, obviously, this isn't like a, a real application, but this is something that you would implement into the UI of your application if you wanted to. Um, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like. And that's it. I will see you next time. Thanks.